Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to look at basic data um, types in Go, how to declare them, and of course how to print them out. But then of course, as usual, we've been doing for C and C++ previously, we can talk a little bit about the nature of those variables, right? Like, you know, how big they are, some of the problems you could go and run into with them. Um, as you can see there, um, Go gave us Boolean types, numeric types, and under numeric types, we have complex type. But C++ also gives us complex type, but it's part of the STL. And so I'm not going to, I didn't include C++, the more complex types. So I'm not going to include complex as a type here. When we look at more advanced type, then I'll circle back and take a look at some of the um, like complex and the language, different languages, whether they provide it um, as part of the language or through a library. Strings are considered basic type in Go also, but I didn't include it because I want to leave strings as a separate chapter. Let's just start with Boolean. Um, C++ introduced Boolean also, but as you're going to see, Boolean is not quite a true Boolean type, even though it has keywords supported in the language. Um, it's more treated like an int. I'll revisit that in this video. I didn't cover it in the C++ video, but I'll cover it in this video. You'll see what I mean. Um, here in Go, Boolean is actually a real type, um, you know, just like in Pascal. Well, let's forget Pascal because very few people probably even remember this Pascal, but it's a real type. And um, not only the keywords for the type, but the keywords for the values. And that's true and false. And those are real type and values in Go. When you print it out, as you're going to see, it prints out as true or false. And you don't have to do any massaging to get the, the result true or false. And you're going to see what I mean when I compare it to C++. In terms of your numeric types, um, Go simplified um, the type system, the, the basic types that you get in C and C++. The C++, to me, makes it even more complicated than C. I didn't really present it. I said, well, C++ pretty much left in place what you get from C. That is not completely true. Um, but I didn't want to really go into just how much more complicated it is in C++ in my opinion. Um, but anyway, Go, I think, really simplifies it. Here you have byte, and it's an 8-bit value. You have rune, which is an um, alias for a 32-bit integer value, um, basically in 32. Um, uint, which can be a 32-bit value or a 64-bit value. Um, you have int, which can be 32 bits or 64 bits. And that those two really depend on the platform you're running. For the most part, I think um, everybody should use the type that I'm going to show next, which specify shows your intent clearly. Ignore you int and int because it depends on the architecture and you don't want to be messing with that. Um, you int pointer, um, just large enough to hold a pointer value. Uh, we didn't talk about pointers, so let's just ignore that and just sort of move on. Um, the important thing there, probably if, if I have to say anything, is that Go actually gives you a type to represent a pointer. To the integer types, um, you have uint8, uint16, uint32, 64, int8, int16, int32, int64. It couldn't be any clearer. And since they're saying uint8 or int8, and they're talking about number of bits, I decided to show the storage size in some terms of bit. Here in Go, it's really clear that uh, when you say u in 64, you're talking about a 64-bit integer value and it's unsigned. And so I think that is pretty clear. Now, people have tried, have done this sort of thing. When we did embedded programming, we actually created aliases um, or type defines to represent um, the same concept, um, but go give you them as type. So I think that's, that's really nice and that's a good cleanup. C++ could have done this, but they chose not to, and they instead allow a crazy mix of types that um, is unbelievable that it could get even more difficult or confusing than it is in C, but trust me, it is. But I try to be objective. Like I say, I'm going to try and be unbiased, and when I tell you that I like something in language or I don't like something in language, even if I like that language, there are things in certain languages that, you know, you like and some things you don't like. Here we go. So floating point type. Again, Go makes it really easy. Float 32 and float 64. That's it. No weird stuff. All right. Um, in terms of how you declare your variables, um, for those of us who went through my Go course already, 
um, this is not going to look um, new to you, but you basically have two ways of declaring uh, variables. And essentially, um, one is declaring, straight declaring a variable, and the other is you always initializing the variable. So let's just look at it. So when you declare a variable, you always start off with a var keyword that tells you that, hey, I'm introducing a variable declaration, and you, it's followed by, that keyword is followed by the identifier, and then the type. So that's your straight declaring. I want a variable of this type. That's it. You don't initialize it. You don't give it a value. In Go, however, Go gives it an initial value, so a sensibly initial value. So you don't have to worry about, I can see or C++, it's just wherever in memory it happens to put it, and then you end up, you know, potentially, if you forget to change it and set it first, then you um, you end up using something that's uninitialized. Um, something like Java doesn't always initialize a variable for you, but it would tell you, that, oh, oh you, it's warning you. That's how you're using this variable and it's, it's not been initialized yet. But anyway, it doesn't force you. Um, the next thing is that you can um, give an expression. So this is how you would declare and initialize a variable. And the thing is, all you do is put an equal sign and the expression. Now, when you do this, the type is actually um, optional because at that point, Go can infer the type from the expression. So the only time you want to use this form where you initialize a variable and still specify a uh, type is when you the type can be interpreted be used more than one way. So let me give you an example. Let's say you wanted to assign a value um, 35 to a variable. Go might choose to put that in int 32, for example. And but you want it to be in a u int 8. In that case, you can say that var age space uint8 equals to 35. So you are specifying what type you want, and then you're saying this is the value for it. Um, and so that's when you might still want go to not use the type that it would infer, because it would just look at that number and then say, oh, it's an integer, all right, for example. Um, same thing with floats. Um, when you go to assign a float value, you might want to if you say some floating point number like 3.5, it might use float 64, for example, and then you might specifically want it to be float 32. So in those sort of instances, then is when you wanna override and say what the type is. This is one, um, so you can say the first two are similar with the second one being more specific where you, you know, specify an expression or a value to initialize a variable with. And that expression could be a literal expression or something gets computed. Um, the second way is when you say identifier colon equal and then the expression. And in that case, um, you're just creating a variable and assigning a value to it. It's the same as saying var. And here too, actually, you can specify the type um, too. Um, and this way of doing things um, again, it's just sort of a shortcut, but you can only do it when you're inside of a function or inside a block of code. So basically outside when you do something at unit level or you know package level, like a variable at package level, that's inside that's not inside of a block. A block would be something that's open and closed by parentheses. Um, so you cannot do the shorthand form without the var keyword. Okay. So let's now take a look at um, some code. But like I said, I want to go back and just do one thing in the C++ example we did before, and that is introduce a Boolean, because C++ does introduce Boolean, but you're going to see something very funny with the Boolean that C++ introduced. It has the Boolean keyword, and it, you could, it, uh, there's a key keyword for true and false, like I said. And so when my declare example, I just use bool and a variable, and then for the initialize example, I'm gonna initialize something to be true. And as you can see, when I scroll back here and look at the printout for zero there, um, this line zero, the first line, you'll see it all is zero. Um, and that's when I did the just a declaration. Now, again, don't count on C++ always initializing values for you. It can, as we've shown, it can be anything, okay? Um, so that's zero. 
when I instead go up and scroll up and look at when I assign it true, notice how the value is one. So we can see that C plus, even though it uses the keyword through and false, it's really just an integer. And if you hold your mouse over the variable, um, you actually see that it tells you that it's an integer. So C++ doesn't make any bones about the fact that oh, a Boolean is just a fancy way of threatening an integer as a Boolean value. And that's because in C, anything that's not zero is sort of truthish. Um, people who program in JavaScript sort of know this. Um, so C has this idea that if you have a value and it's not zero, then it can be treated as true. So you can put that in a for loop, uh, if statement, and so on. As you can see, when we start comparing um, logical operating and, and conditionals, we're going to see that oh, that doesn't carry true in all languages, especially in Go. Um, they try to fix that because there's a nice source of bugs for people who have programmed extensively in C. Um, no. All right. And of course, you can still use auto, so that still works. So now let's, that's all, really. Um, I missed from the last time, whatever. So let's go copy this and make it our Go example. And of course, we're going to rename a few things um, the directory. We don't need the main program that gets created when we use run code. And of course, we have to, I can say, rename even this in a directory. And then we're going to rename our file to be a Go file. So now we're going to start modifying this file. and. Um, we're going to change the functions to be Go functions. And we basically just taking out the return type and introducing the keyword FNT for function. And when we're done, um, now we want to go and change the printouts. Now, this is C++ C out, and this looks like more work to me than just taking the C version and then changing this to Go because I just have to do FMT.print and then the type instead of actually specifying all the type, which would pretty much work in C in um, Go, but I, I just would rather be lazy and just do percent %V, because percent %V in Go means you print out using the appropriate type from the variable. And so Go already knows what type of variable that is, so why not use the correct type? So it's shorthand for you getting the type that's appropriate for the variable, except Go fills it in for you when you get lazy and just do um, percent %V. So I think that's more straightforward. Um, you don't have to change it if you change your variable type, that sort of thing. So I like that feature in Go, just using percent %V. But on line 30, I left it with percent %X because I want to show you that Go also supports you specifying the type. And in this case, it also allows you to say that I'm printing it out in hexadecimal, uh, hexadecimal value. Okay, so of the last thing we have to do is, of course, change all this auto to var. And um, the way C++ initialize stuff with parentheses, we don't want that. So it's easiest if we just go grab the C way of doing things and modify that instead. And of course, we can just say equal, and we know how that's going to work. Because um, that's what we said. One of the things that go is you just have to say var, the identifier, and give it a value. Now, we're going to create a rune, and as we saw, a rune is just an alias for um, int32. And so that represents a character. So that allows Go to, uh, to create, to not only allow you to write the code, but represent characters from any language. Unlike C and C++, where you have to have white character and all these mm. other things. Um, so you don't need that complication in, in Go. Um, a rune is just white character and a byte is a um, alias for uint8, which is 8 bits. And that's good for like when you want to read stuff from a file, you're just going to read in 8 bits at a time. Well, not 8 bits at a time, but you're going to read slices of bytes. So that works. So now um, we need to change this for our declaration example. And that is going to be, again, pretty straightforward. We're just going to be taking out all the assignments and um, that pretty much leaves it as that. Now, in the case of where we want to just um, declare a variable without assigning it, we have to specify the type. So we can't just say var alone and leave it. So we have to here we have to specify the type. Okay, so we still have a bug. So what could it be? So let's go scroll down to line 25 and 26. 
and we see it all we still we have to fix um the type we don't have a character c so we are a variable c so we have to fix that um after we fix that in two places and of course added our flag variable um we also um gonna still have an issue because Go doesn't like the idea of us declaring variables that we're not going to use. And so they're on line um, 21 and 22 and 45 and 46. We have two variables that we're not going to use. So again, this is something that you can do in C and C++ where you declare variables, never use them in your entire program, and it's okay. Now, you could argue whether or not that's wasteful in terms of memory being allocated, but um, Go just decide, you know what, this is going to be an error, not just a warning, it's an error. And in C and C++, you can turn on compiler options to say, do all warnings or warn if you have unused, if I have unused variables and all this other stuff, and it would warn you. But those are things you have to turn on. By default, Go just does not allow it. So um, that makes writing better code. Okay, If you don't use a variable, why have it there? So in order for a program to compile, we really have to come in this house. We weren't using those variables, so we're not going to use them now. All right, so we run it and there's our output. So if we open up here, you can see that all our numeric values were initialized and even our Boolean printed out as false and true, not as zero and one, as false and true, um, because those are the allowed values for them and those are real values, okay? Um, and those, we don't have to think of them as integer or anything funny like that, okay? So we also, like I said, have all the other types you could think about, you know, um, E and F and so on, but why use those? Again, I'd rather use the default of percent %V and know that how it works. Um, finally, um, if we compare our Go code to C code, we can see that actually Go looks more C-like than C++ looks C. And by that I mean, Sure, you can take the C one and compare compile it in C++ without any changes. But then if you actually had to say, well, okay, what are the things that C++ give me? I want to use that, which is how I um, initialize variables, how I print them out, and so on. It actually looks much further from C than, than Go does. So uh, what does that mean? Does it really matter that Go looks more C-like? Well, not really, um, except in that if you're coming from C to Go, it's probably easier than going to C++. And honestly, I would say if you had to pick a true successor to C, it probably would be Go. Um, so here we are. Um, this is Go, and again, I think Go did a lot of things well in terms of how it um, introduces variable, clean them up, it simplifies the declaration. Uh, we haven't seen any complex declaration really in C, C++, or Go yet. But we're going to look at that in the future, where we're going to look at some really gnarly declaration that you can do in C and C++, and it's going to, how much easier it's going to be in C to C and Go to say the same thing. Um, some of the Angular language, other languages we're going to look at don't even allow you to say those sort of things just because they're not system programming language. So they don't need to allow you to do those complex type of declaration. But that's much, much further along, so we're not going to rush to get there. All right. Thanks for your time. Um, this is, you know, if you look no Go already, this was kind of boring and go like, oh, yeah, of course Go was simple and not crazy. And even, honestly, we haven't done anything crazy in the other languages, really. I'll just hint at craziness. Um, follow me on Twitter, Straversity1, um, Instagram, Straversity, and see you in the next video. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye. Have a great day.